Hey guys, welcome to the RevitKid.com. This is part two of our door series, and today I'm going to show you um, a couple tips on creating a door frame. Uh, there's a few ways you can do this. You can model it within the door family, and or model it as a nested family outside of it. Load it in with instance parameters and lock it around. Uh, I guess they both sort of have their advantages and disadvantages. Um, the advantage of modeling it within the door family itself and not nesting it is that it's easier to uh, change the parameters of the frame within the project without having to worry about shared parameters and, and nested parameters and all that. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, but pulling it outside of it, if you have a very complex type of frame or something, it's actually nice to have the uh, instant parameter, just bring it in and lock it instead of dealing with a million different uh, reference planes and, and, and such in the door family. So let's start with the first method, which is creating the door frame within the family. So I'm going to go to my exterior view. We already have reference planes here. I'm going to create some new reference planes. I'm type in RP for reference planes, or on the home screen you can click reference plane. So RP, and I'm actually I'm going to give it a little bit of width. And so let's, let's say it goes in about an inch, and then I'm going to copy it and pull it out. Let's say it goes out four inches or something like that. Now I'm going to simply take this and mirror it. Um, if you saw a post a while ago, I think it was uh, Steve posted it on uh, Revit Op Ed about mirroring reference planes. Uh, in this case, it won't be affected very much. Um, about how what your, your top and your bottom of your reference plane are. They're really just being used to pull, push and pull. Um, in, in different types of models, that'll actually make a deal, big deal, but it's easy to just mirror it out. So now I'm just uh, drawing a reference plane here. I'm gonna pull this out one inch. I'm going to copy it back four inches. So now we've got this uh, the skeleton that we created out of reference planes. Now I'm going to add parameters to that. So I'm going to dimension. I type di for dimension. So it's all going to be based off of this reference plane, which is your right reference plane or your left reference plane that's already created within the door family. So we're going to create a parameter here. We're going to say add parameter. We're going to ignore these frame projection ones right now. Those are already created. And we actually, I guess we could use those. Um, actually, if we want, we could dimension. Now let's, let's pull it from here. Or maybe, you know what, let's do this. Let's, let's lock this one here. Let's not add too many parameters now, very early. So I'm just going to lock this one inch dimension. You can actually create this uh, as a parameter so that, so that in the project you can change the actual inset of it. But right now, I don't think we need to get into that. This way, now we can say from here to here is going to be our door width, I mean our frame width. So from this reference plane to this reference plane, and this one to this one, we can grab these three. And we can actually use the parameter that's already there, which is called frame width, which is set to three inches. We could change that. But if you notice, uh, this stayed one inch in and pulled it out. That's what that lock dimension did. Now I'm going to uh, I'm going to get rid of the uh, change the scale a bit. Ooh, way too small. If you notice, we have that that zero zero foot one inch. This is just something that I like to do. I like to suppress that. It's kind of annoying. So if you type U N on the keyboard. It pulls up the project units, and you can simply go into into your length format and say suppress zero feet. Oop. Don't want to see the help file. And click OK. That just bugs me sometimes, especially when I'm when you start getting to a lot of dimensions there. So now we have this. <clears throat> now, again, there's a bunch of different ways that you could create this frame. Now. Um, first, let's test test these parameters we added by changing the width and the height to make sure they move with it. So if we change the width to 2 feet, you see all our parameters moved in with it. 3 feet, moved out with it, and check this to 8 feet, and they move. That's good. Very well done. Okay, so, again, now there's different ways that you create this frame. Um, if it's going to be a frame that wraps, if it's going to be a frame that's inside, um, sometimes it's easier, it's easier to do a set of extrusions, sometimes it's easy to do a sweep. I think for the sake of of this 
actual tutorial, I might think about doing an extrusion and joining them. Let me think about this. Or maybe I'll do a sweep. Maybe I'll do a sweep because what th this type of frame we want it to wrap. We want it to actually wrap the inside and outside, no matter what kind of wall it is. So I think sweep would be good. So I'm going to go to home. Okay, so we're going to create a sweep. So under home, you click the sweep and pick path. Now all we're going to do is we're going to pick around the door and click finish. And that just picks 3D edges. Now I just realized that we probably won't need to have all those. Uh, parameters that I just added. We'll probably only need one set, but we're still going to keep them there for now. So, If we go into our floor plan and we say edit profile, we can now sketch our profile. So we're going to sketch a profile around here, and we're eventually going to lock it. So we just sketch this. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to align using AL and lock that. Lock this section as well as this section. Now we want to actually lock the inside to the face of the wall. Or this inside to the face of the wall. Uh, sometimes you can use these reference planes, but at the same sometimes they also uh, don't work very well. And now we're going to dimension. And this is going to be our parameter that we already set up. So I'm using DI for dimension. And I actually make you should make sure that you dimension from the inside of the wall. So I'm just tabbing through to get the inside of the wall. Uh, select these two dimensions and we're going to call these frame projection. We use the interior one, we can change the names of it. Uh, mini. Whoa. I'm going to change those width. Okay, I'm going to say frame projection interior, one inch. Now we click finish. And then we click finish. And now I've wrapped our sweep around. If we go on 3D, you can see our sweep. Now we have to test that. Um, like I said, if, if you go to the if you go to the front view now, you actually realize that we probably don't need all of these dimensions because we only need the one side where we swept it from. But thanks to the uh, the 3D edge. But now let's just test it. I had four feet. You can see it adjusts. Uh, three feet, it adjusts. Pull this down to six feet, and it adjusts. Let's go in 3D. Okay, uh, now we're going to load this into the project. Overwrite our parameters. You're going to see our, our uh, frames up here. And now the frame should adjust to the wall thickness. That's what I would like to test. So, let's change the scale. Okay, so there's our door with our frames. Might be able to see it better with thin lines. There's our door. So now if I change this wall, the frame should adjust to it. And you see it did. And this is still parametric. If you go in 3D, you still see all 3D stuff. So that's a basic frame. It's a very simple way to do it. And next time I'll show you another way to do it.